Steve Mielhausen back here on the podcast and coming up on CMT on Sunday, July 6th, starting at 9 p.m. Eastern. The Broken Skull Challenge puts the elite athletes to the test. So in the heart-pounding competition, it is starring Stone Cold Steve Austin, and he is joining us. And Steve, thank you so much for the time today. And I listen to the podcast, and every time, I'm he- every time I listen to a podcast, Steve, I'm hearing about the Broken Skull Challenge. What is this? Man, with- What's that? What does this mean to you? Because we hear it in every podcast that you do on the Steve Austin show. How much does well, this show Well, you know, I'm just building up and, and uh, you know, creating some awareness. You know, I know CMT is doing their end. I want to do my end because I'm excited about the show, and I'm very passionate about the show. Uh, I created the Broken Skull Challenge because I love hardcore, heavy-duty physical competition. Uh, you know, I hosted a show on CMT called Redneck Island. You were voted off the island by a vote. I wanted a competition show where you competed head-to-head against another person, and then if you win, you stick around. If you lose, you go home. So what I've done is I created the show, created the challenges, and each week I bring eight badass athletes to my ranch. Three rounds of competition. Uh, One person is left standing. That person the next day will take on my obstacle course. It is named the Skull Buster. And when I designed the Skull Buster, I designed that course to whip a man's ass or a woman's ass. Uh, So we did five episodes with guys, five episodes with women, and I'll tell you what, the women were ultra competitive, just like the guys were. So each week is heavy-duty competition, and I love it. What type of athletes did you get to be on the show? Oh, they're they're, they're all badasses from the world of CrossFit, from uh, uh, Tough Mudder, Spartan Races, Parkour, uh, MMA, uh, one or two uh, that were trying to get into pro wrestling, but they were all uh, extremely fit. And you don't need just uh, physical skills, uh, determination, strength, agility, balance, but you need heart and you need desire and you need willpower because my course will break you down bit by bit physically, but then you'll start doubting yourself. And if you ain't strong enough mentally, you won't survive. Now, watching the preview, and, and i seen all that, and at the end, did Stone Cold Steve Austin do the Skull Buster? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I haven't gone through the Skull Buster at the rapid pace that some of the competitors attempt it. Uh, I kind of meandered through it. Uh, <laughs> these days, after, 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 after the body parts I've left all over the world in a squared circle, I, uh, I proceeded to cross the Skull Buster with trepidation. Now, going on your fourth season of doing reality TV through CMT, when your career ended in 2003, did you ever think you would get into this realm of television, or were you just kind of like, I want to do action movies, and that's going to be my genre and my thing? No, well, you know, actually, when I got out of the ring, I I didn't do anything for three years, but then I said, hey, man, you better take your ass out to Hollywood and uh, try to do something in Los Angeles. And so I got into a, a couple of big movies and a lot of independent movies, and then I hosted Tough Enough, and that disappeared. And then I did Redneck Island and, and came up with the concept with this, pitched it to CMT. They said, hey, let's do this. This sounds badass. So now the Broken Skull Challenge. Uh, I love reality television. And so this is really what I'm focusing most on uh, in my career now. I, I, I love reality television, and I love doing my podcast twice a week. Uh, some of the movie stuff or TV work. Eh, you know, if there's something that's interesting out there, I'll do it. But to answer your question, did I think I'd be doing anything like this? Hell no. But am I loving it? Hell yeah. You know, do you ever think that, you know, because you, you, know, you said you did Tough Enough, and, you know, and it was one of the things I, I, you know, I've listened to your podcast and seen that, you know, you were disappointed that that didn't continue, and there's been some rumblings that there, it's going to continue again on the WWE Network. Do you see yourself doing that in the future, if asked? Hey, man, yeah. I've heard so much about <laughs> Tough Enough. Coming back, it's not coming back. Hey, I love that show, but I, I, I refuse to comment on it because, you know, you don't know if it's real or not. So, I, no comment. Now, talking about, ne- you know, wrestling question here, you know, and talking about neck injuries, you know, and, the, and, you know, one of the reasons why you had to get out of the ring and, you know, for, you know, Daniel Bryan, you know, going, went through a minimally invasive neck surgery recently, and he had to forfeit the WWE title. And, you know, fans are like, oh, you know, he should come back. Why doesn't he come back sooner? And, you know, some people are like, oh, maybe he was getting pressured to come back, and that's why he had to drop the title. And what advice can you give to Daniel Bryan, considering you went through a neck surgery? Not as much more, you know, you know, you were out for a much longer time than Daniel Bryan is, but how much, what advice can you give him regarding something like this? 
Well, you know, I, I don't know what minimally invasive means. I don't know what technique they performed on him. Do you? No, it was something to do with the nerve root to decompress the root so he can be able to Okay, so, yeah, I don't know the nature of his injury, so I know exactly what happened to mine. There were many things that happened along, you know, when I, when I got dropped on my head, I bruised my spinal cord and had some spinal stenosis, had bone spurs going into the spinal cord, had to have that cleaned off. So I was, and I had to have a fusion at the level three and four. So I don't know what he's gone through. I just know that, you know, anytime you have a neck injury, you always have a neck injury. So I, I hope that he's able to come back with a style that keeps him in the ring and he's able to, to uh, generate, uh, you know, the great income because he's paid a lot of dues. He finally got to the top in a money-making position. So I hope that he's able to continue at that uh, pace, change his work around a little bit and keep cashing those checks. I did reach out to him, called him on the telephone, and I was going to call and check in with him. Never got a call back. Uh, just going to kind of pick his brain and see where he was at and what he had done. So I have no idea to the extent of his injury. What WWE superstar do you think would have the most difficult time with the Broken Skull Challenge? Uh, would have the most difficult or would least it, difficult? The least difficult time. The least? Yes. Okay, uh, that's a good question. I, I think uh, I had this uh, question on a couple of other interviews. I think Seth Rollins and Antonio Cesaro might be able to uh, get through the course. But, you know, they'd have to get through the challenges first and have to add competition and then take on the course. Uh, it, would be, <laughs> it would be very <laughs> interesting to see Seth Rollins compete against uh, Antonio Cesaro at the Broken Skull Challenge. Who, you know, is it considering, you know, we're going back to the neck, and do you, did you ever think, you know, I imagine at, at the end of your career you would have gone into acting and you would have gone to some time, whether it was slow reality TV or in the world of movies. How much longer do you think you would have wrestled if you didn't have those neck issues? Man, that's a, that's a real good question. Man, I had easy, you know, uh, you know, I was uh, I was probably running a little bit too hard, living too fast. But if I had not had the neck injury, five to seven years. Well, you know, I think when I, I think I walked away, I was probably what thirty nine or forty. That's well, I've been correct. gone twelve years. I'm forty nine. Yeah, man. Put it this way: I had a lot of miles left in the tank, and there was a lot of money left on the table. Who in your mind? Because there's never going to be the ne- another Stone Cold Steve Austin. Just like there's never going to be another Hulk Hogan. There's never going to be another Rock. But in your mind, who can you see yourself as the next big guy to break through that ceiling and become a mainstream like a rock a stone cold, in a Stone Cold Steve Austin? Man, that's a good question. The guy, there, there, there's three guys who, who right now have big superstars written on them. I think Bray Wyatt's one of them. I think Cesaro's one of them. But when, when, when I got to mention the guy that you're trying to ask for and I want to uh, put a jinx on him or slow him down, it's <laughs> Roman Reigns. He happens to be related to the rock. Good-looking kid, damn good work in the ring. Uh, I, I want to know some more about his promos, but, man, if I got to look at that roster right now and say, who's my next megastar, his name is Roman Reigns. Is it all about the it factor, Steve? Just because when I watch, oh, I watch Raw or I watch SmackDown, he pops out at me. It's like, that's the guy. He has that it factor. He's, it's like he's the coolest guy in the room type of factor. Okay, right there when you look at him, he has the it factor. But can he take it to the level of the people you just mentioned? That's the question at hand, and that's going to be, you know, through him putting in a lot of work and that promotion, uh, booking and and promoting him in a proper fashion. I know they'll strap a rocket to his back, but it's up to him to maintain the course, and it's up to them to put him in the right storyline. So, you know, it's not a given. He still has to do it. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And Steve, final question for you, and thank you for joining us today. Why should the fans watch Steve Austin's Broken Skull Challenge on Sunday, July 6th, starting at 9 Eastern on CMT? Yeah, and you know what? They change the time. It's going to be 8 Eastern, and they're going to replay it at 9 Eastern. So that 9 Eastern time still works. Reason to watch the Broken Skull Challenge. It ain't like anything else on TV. This is no frills, nothing fancy, head-to-head competition. Three rounds of competition, starting with eight badass athletes, end up with one to take on my personal obstacle course, half-mile course, ten obstacles, called the Skull Buster, designed it to whip a man's ass, and it does. If you like competition, you'll dig my show. Steve, thank you so much for the time today. The best of luck with the show. 